depending on make it or buy it, we're gonna be making or trying to make mozzarella cheese. It's a staple on our diet. It's our favorite type of cheese. Sarah and I have been wanting to make mozzarella on this channel for years. But we've always been super intimidated, but we came across a video that explains it really well and makes it seem less intimidating. So we're gonna try it today. And we're gonna do a taste test versus the one that we bought from the store. And we're gonna decide at the end of all of this, is it worth it to make it or buy it? And if you're new on keto, you don't know this yet, but cheese is a very important ingredient. Sarah and I have been living a ketogenic lifestyle since January of 2019, and we've lost a combined total of 160 pounds. And we eat cheese almost every single day. And so Sarah and I have been looking at recipes to make cheese for a long time. And there's some really great recipes out there. But the creator, Megan Hayes Reed, posted a video on TikTok that I came across and I said, you know what? I think I'm finally willing to give this a try because it sounds relatively straightforward. And I know in the past that when I've said that it looks relatively straightforward or that I think it's gonna be easy, that it turns out as a disaster. So we're just gonna see how this is gonna go today. You're gonna need one gallon of whole milk that is not ultra pasteurized. You're gonna need citric acid and you're gonna need rennet. You can use either liquid rennet or rennet tablets. We have the rennet tablets and you're gonna need some water and a pot. This pot is a six, 0.5 inch quart pot and one gallon of milk is four quarts. So we're going to start off by pouring our whole milk into our pot. I'm going to gracefully put this milk into this pan without spilling a drop. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh! <laughs> we have lost a drop. Emily has failed. How do you feel about that? I feel pretty good. You're gonna need one and one half teaspoons of citric acid. I'm going to stir this while adding in the citric acid because you're gonna want it to be evenly distributed. So sprinkle it along the top and stir it in. And while that heats up, we're gonna talk about the sponsor of this video, Element. Element is a delicious, tasty, electrolyte drink mix with everything that you need and nothing that you don't. That means lots of salt with no sugar. Element contains a science-backed electrolyte ratio of 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, and 60 milligrams of magnesium. Element is perfectly formulated for someone following a ketogenic or low-carb diet, and Sarah and I drink Element every single day. We've been talking about this company for years, way before they started sponsoring videos on our channel. It makes you feel great. That's because when you go into ketosis for the first time, you shed a lot of water, and inside that water are your electrolytes. Element replenishes your electrolytes so that you feel better. And it is literally the best tasting electrolyte supplement Sarah and I have ever tried. We love the citrus salt, the orange salt, the raspberry salt, and all of the flavors taste absolutely amazing. Right now, Element is offering our viewers a free sample pack. It looks like this, so you can try all the flavors. That's eight single serving packets free with any order from Element. This way you can try all the flavors or share some with a salty friend. To get this deal, you must go to drinklmnt.com slash keto twins. Thanks so much to Element for sponsoring another video on our channel. Sponsors really help keep our channel going. And thanks to you guys for supporting our sponsors. In the recipe, she uses liquid rennet. We got the tablets because this is what I had on hand because I've been wanting to make cheese for a long time. So I had this in my kitchen. If you use liquid rennet, then it is only three ingredients. But if you have to break it down with water, then it's technically four. But three ingredients sounds way better than four ingredients for a YouTube video. So there you have it. So to break down this rennet tablet, we're going to take one fourth cup of water and we're going to pour the contents of this little package in it and we're going to crush it until it is fully dissolved. Next up we're going to check to see if our milk has come up to about 88 degrees. Mm. Is it ruined? No, I don't think so. 92. Oh. I'm just gonna let this get back down. Oh, but you can already see that it's starting to hurdle here. Okay, we're gonna stir this while mixing in our rennet. Make sure it's completely combined. Okay, now we're gonna try to get this up to 105 degrees. All right, so this has reached a temperature of 105. It doesn't look as solid as what she is showing in her video. So I'm gonna let it sit for like a minute or two and then we're going to do the next step. I'm scared that they're not formed, but this is go time. So I'm gonna be taking this and straining out the curds into a mesh sieve. Ooh. It will start forming when the whey drains out, I think. The strainer got clogged. It looks like it's clogged. Here, I'll show you guys. It, it's not draining properly. I don't know what's wrong with it, but we decided to go with a cheesecloth and Sarah's squeezing the stuff way, out of it. Way. Extra whey out of it. It seems to be working. 
but um, it looked like this was all clogged. We couldn't get the way out. So I don't know if we did something wrong or. So our cars are off to the side and they're dripping and they're draining that extra way. We're gonna take about one third of the reserved way and we're gonna be adding in about a tablespoon of kosher salt. And we're gonna be bringing up the whey salt mixture up to 180 degrees. Here are our curds. We're gonna hopefully unveil it and then start cutting up our cheese curds. Oh. Wow, look at that. It's a ball. We're gonna cut it into one inch cubes and then we're going to add it back into our salted whey mixture. I feel like the cheesecloth did eat up some of our curds. So we're gonna separate this mixture into two different piles and that's what we're gonna form our mozzarella balls with. So we actually have less curds than she does in the video because our cheesecloth kind of absorbs some. So just be aware of that. If you let the mixture cool down too much, it's not going to combine and make a giant ball like you want. It's gonna kind of stick to the cheesecloth. So kind of have to work fast. You know, we're filming a video here, so we're trying to capture everything. And I think that we might have let the mixture cool down a little bit too much and it made the cheese curds kind of like separate instead of combine. So you wanna do this pretty quickly. We're gonna transfer our blocks of cheese over to our bowl. We're gonna pour the salted hot way on top of it and then we're going to hopefully start pulling our cheese. Kind of just pressing all the cubes together to make it easier to form my ball. I feel like I have giant hands. I can't feel anything. <laughs> so here she said to let gravity kind of do its thing. So that's what I'm doing. Kind of let it kind of stretch and fold it over. Drop it back in warm it through. The warmer it is, the more pliable it is, and that's what you kind of want with this. It becomes very hard to work with if it's too cold. Just lightly going over, putting it back in to warm it up. So after we get the shape that we want, the nice ball shape that we're looking for, we're gonna let this sit in the way that's salted for about 20 minutes. And today we're going to be comparing it to a store-bought mozzarella cheese. And in the end, we're going to see if you should make it or buy it. Well, let me tell you guys, it was a journey to get here. I don't even think that I could tell the difference if I didn't know which ball was bigger mm -hmm. before, while we were plating it up. They look almost identically the same. Even the texture inside looks very comparable. This is the one that we made, less mm -hmm. textured on the inside. So we're super happy with how this turned out so far. So we just plated it up with um, some fresh tomatoes, a little bit of basil that Sarah has been growing in her backyard. We have an amazing variety that we grow. It's called Amazel Basil and it grows like a bush. It yeah. grows like a tree. It's so vigorous and huge. And we just topped it with some olive oil, salt, and pepper, and that's it. I bet you could use this like in pizzas. If you guys wanna make like tortilla pizzas with this, it would be great. We're gonna try the store-bought stuff first, just to see, give us something to compare our homemade things to. We're really used to this brand. We buy it all the time. Belgosio? Belgosio, that's the brand that we buy all the time. I love caprese salads. They're really fresh in the summer. I love tomatoes and eating really like simply in the summer when these things are available. It's good. Mm -hmm. It's what we're used to. The texture is a little crumbly. Have you ever tried burrata before? Yes, I have. Yeah, I love burrata. Very good. Mm -hmm. All right, so I think we remember what that store-bought stuff tastes like. Mm -hmm. Let's move along to our homemade version. Appearance-wise, they're smaller. The ball was smaller than the store-bought one. And I think that's because when we were trying to separate the curds from the whey, we let the mixture cool down too much. That's what caused the curds to kind of get stuck in the metal sieve. So that's when we moved it over to a cheesecloth. Doesn't smell like anything, so. Mm. Mm. It actually tastes more like cheese. Mm -hmm. It has more of a tangy flavor, which I like. I feel like the other mozzarella is very neutral. I feel like this one has a little bit more of a tang to it, kind of like cottage cheese almost. It's really good. I'm really surprised. The texture tastes very similar. I think that um, the first time you make it, you're kind of just guessing what the process is and trying to figure out does it need to be this exact temperature? Right. And you're like overly following the directions instead of like feeling it and trying to work with it. And I think that if you make this a couple times, you're really gonna master how to make cheese. I'm really happy we tried this, you know? I was kind of nervous going into it's this. So good. There was a couple moments where Emily was about to storm off and drive away and never come back, but hey, we, we got through it. We just don't wanna fail for you guys all the time. Sometimes we come here and we're trying to like have fun and there's nothing fun about really messing up something. And like with the chocolate recipe, I was really sad. Oh, the Snickers? 
going well. They look like turds. I do feel like we cook a decent amount, but we are still very much amateurs and we are not afraid to say that. We just wanna make things less intimidating so that you guys wanna try it at home. So part of this whole make it or buy it series is the cost. That's gonna be a determining factor in whether or not we think that you should make this at home or just go to the store and buy it. So the store-bought mozzarella is $4.29 and that's for eight ounces. We did lose a big portion of our curds in the metal sieve and also in our cheese cloth. I bet we could have formed another whole ball of cheese out mm -hmm. of the stuff we lost. Okay, so what we purchased from Amazon was citric acid for $5.99, the rennet tablets that was $5.90, and the gallon of milk. Make sure it's not ultra pasteurized, and we paid $4.19 for that. The grand total of the supplies that we spent to make mozzarella was $16.08. However, the rennet tablets, there's eight rennet tablets in a box, and you could make it eight times. You could make this eight times. And so you have to keep that in mind that if you want to make this often, you can buy these things in bulk. It's relatively inexpensive to make your own mozzarella. I think that cost wise you're going to be spending the most of the money on the milk mm -hmm. when you make it because you're going to have the rennet and you're going to have the citric acid and you're going to make more with the milk. I think that we could easily get maybe 14 to 16 ounces of mozzarella out of one gallon of milk. So keep that in mind. Cost wise it's more cost efficient to make your own mozzarella mm -hmm. but taste wise and just like the coolness factor of it. Sarah are you going to make it or are you going to buy it? I think I'd make it. I think that it was fun learning something new, a new process of making cheese. I've never thought I would make cheese before. After we got a feel for it, it came out pretty well. I love the taste of it. I think it'd be really cool to make a bunch of these cheese balls and give them out to family and just be really proud that you made something at home. So I definitely think I'll make this again. How about you? Make it. So yeah, definitely try this. And we will leave a link to the TikTok below and all the ingredients that you're gonna need. And if you would like to see us make keto Pop-Tarts and compare them to the store-bought version to figure out if you should make make it or buy it, you can click right here. This is a really fun video and we'll see you over there. Anyway, I'm Emily and I'm Sarah and, and we, we are, are the Keto, Keto Twins, Twins signing out. out.